Yeah, let's do it. Tuesday night. Kevin, we, yeah, we're, hi. We're, we're half loaded, um, but uh, not yet because we haven't had anything, uh, any libations yet. But I, I um, should add one right before we came on because I think I might drink five of what I'm going to have tonight during this hour show. So we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to hear about it. It, it, it. That sounds like a really good one. So it's it's going to be a good one. Yeah, totally. I'm ready. Totally. So, hey, let's get to it. Welcome to the weekly Baseball Brew Crew Podcast. We're keeping baseball history alive one craft beer at a time. Wherever you are watching us live today or listening to us, give us a like and a follow. If you love beer with your baseball, please tell a friend. Here is the lineup card for today. As I said, we're half loaded. <laughs> we actually Wait, what? <laughs> we are half loaded. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Angelo Trinidad and Cowboy Jack Durango are on assignment this week. But leading off is our field correspondent and senior research analyst at the Baseball Brew Crew. It is Kevin Lyon. Welcome, Kevin. Well, let's give a shout out to Angelo, who's somewhere there. Literally, he doesn't have Wi-Fi, so that's why he cannot join us yet. Hopefully, (laughs) hopefully, you know, that sounds like something I would have lived in back in, like, 1895, you know, (laughs) back before photography was really a thing. But good to be here, and I'm going to do my best to make it as good of a show as usual. Wait, hold on. Hang on. What's happening? What's happening? Wait, what? Hey, I'm here, guys! Are you ready? (laughs) All right, let me hear you. I'll have a microphone, but I'll do my best. All right. Oh my goodness. Let me get my pal out here. This is my helper here. Let me get him out here. I don't even see what it says. My assistant for this song. Oh, get ready, guys. You think Cowboy Jack is good? Wait till you hear Kevin Loggins. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm all right. Nobody worry about me. Why you gotta give me a hard time? Baby, can't you see? The beer is the answer. To all of life's strife. So let's raise a glass and enjoy the good life. Now the folks like the beer light and pale. Others run for a brew that's dark as hell. But no matter what your preference may be, just grab a cold one and yell see. <sighs> Some say that drinking's bad for your health, but I say it's good for the soul and mental health. Ready? I'm all right. Nobody worry about me. Why you gotta give me a hard time? Baby, can't you see? The beer is the answer to all of life's strife. So let's raise a glass and enjoy the good life. Ladies and gentlemen, Charlie Guzzle isn't here, so I'm the more, I'm the worst substitute you'll ever get. But <laughs> I gave him that song. I have my fellow here. Yes, it really is what you think it is. Uh, I might get in trouble if I play it, but let's see. Let's see if it'll work. Oh, of course, it's not going to work. I just put new batteries in last night. <laughs> Oh my God! How awesome is that? But he's so old, he won't move. <laughs> that is awesome. Let him hear it. Yes. <laughs> and he muted himself, so it doesn't even matter. Kevin, you muted yourself. <laughs> yeah, I I didn't want to get in trouble playing the song. Oh, I see. <laughs> Well, well, <laughs> dead air doesn't make for a better show, Kevin. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. I should have pressed mute when I sang. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, you did it all backwards. But Absolutely. I had the prop, and I'm like, I gotta use the prop. So I realized I gotta figure this song out, and then like 30 minutes while I'm sitting in traffic. So I know that was just. I'm definitely not a songbird of the generation. I'll tell you that much. Maybe the yeah. dead generations. Yes. <laughs> Arabella uh, Gaming says, nice beaver, Ed. He just had it stuffed. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, he just had it stuffed. Thank you. <laughs> Wrong this movie. Is legit, Wrong this movie. is a legit, like, process. Like, one of my family members would collect, would, would buy random plush stuff, and I saw it and going, yeah. this is the gopher from Caddyshack? So I literally had to, like, I kept amazing. that for, like, 20-something years. <laughs> and it still works somehow. 
Well, it definitely leans into what we'll be talking about tonight. So we'll keep that on tap, if uh, as you if you will. Um, also, by the way, I wanted to mention the uh, internet issue. Uh, Angela doesn't have internet in uh, Texas. Well, in fairness, I have internet, but uh, realistically, there's times when I don't have internet. So it doesn't really matter anyway. So it's it's uh, it's invisible yet it's it's there, but it's not there. So um, my name is Michael Mondragon, your humble host for the festivities tonight. So let us take you on our three-hour tour of insane baseball knowledge. I'm hoping it'll be closer to an hour or an hour and a half if necessary, uh, but <laughs> let's, let's do it. Let's get into it. So uh, before we start, uh, I wanted to uh, talk about what we did on Sunday, Kevin. Uh, we yes. did some hopping around and we went yes. to the Modesto Nuts versus the Inland Empire 66ers game in San Bernardino. Um, yeah. It was starting to get hot out there. And uh, as you can see, there's there's a lot of advertisements. Uh, I see Coors Light up there. I see I see Hanger. Um, they four. Yeah, and they have a, they have a stand four. there on the third base side. Right, right. Yeah, right. so, but, but there were two tragic events that happened that shook the very foundation of the baseball brew crew. And uh, I'll go into them now. Um, well, first of all, the, the game was uh, Inland Empire won five to three. Um, Mother's Day, it was a, a great day to hang out. It was a very lazy, lazy day. and uh, But IE came out on top. But the tragic event, number one, uh, was the Hangar 24 <laughs> booth was <laughs> shut down. So uh, we usually hang out here uh, Well, before the game, uh, also a little bit during the game. Uh, because Hangar 24 is one of our favorite breweries out there, and we definitely want to check it out. And there was nobody manning the stations, so that was a a uh, a, a, a a first blow uh, may, to us. <laughs> and, and may I add too? So I asked. I went to like the the, the bar, the, the, like you know the food, the concession stand, and I literally saw every single thing would have a cap a tap on it, nothing. And I said, "You guys have any draft beer at all?" Like, no. The only place it does. Is I don't know if you took a photo. There's a bar up on the first base dugout. There's a little bar there. Oh yeah, they have they have they have a couple beers over there. And it was literally I think like Blue Moon and was it Coors Light I think on draft. Yeah. That was the entire thing yeah. on draft. And it was like almost 90 degrees out. So yeah. I'm like, oh great. <laughs> I think I think they gave everybody the day off for Mother's Day. So yeah. you know very thin staff. You know we were like, hey whatever we 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 can figure it out later. Um, but as you see there uh, at, on the bottom of that booth there the uh, hashtag is uh, created for adventure. Well, on this hot day, we were stopped at the border and uh, <laughs> had to wait it out. And um, But there was a, uh, a second tragic event, and it's something that it's going to take some time for me to get over. Oh, well, um, what happened? Well, you know, the, the Inland Empire 66ers have a beer batter. So the yeah. uh, worst hitter on the opposing team comes up to bat. If they strike out, uh, there's a... Uh, a beer deal. Uh, it's a macro beer deal, but you know, mm -hmm. so but it's fun. You know, we check it out. We've always been encouraging uh, minor league baseball teams to get the craft breweries involved uh, in in that promotion. Uh, uh, it's still falling on deaf ears, but we get it. But uh, Kevin Lyon, what? Uh, <laughs> wait, wait, what? What? That wasn't me. What? What's Kevin? What? Wait, what is that in Kevin's hand? Is that a Coors Light? Isn't that what I drank out of my shoe? <laughs> I actually uh, was going to blur these out, but uh, I, 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 I thought I, I want to properly shame you uh, for taking you part in the beer better. But uh, yeah, you, you partook. So, hey, so those, yeah. So those two, it was like literally, I think like $2 a can. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? Cheap. It's hot. So two of those, I mean, <laughs> honestly, I was going to get a water and I realized water had been more expensive than that. So I figured I might as well just get a Coors Light. Yeah. Yeah, Two it, was, light. it was definitely too good to pass up for sure. And, uh, you know, there was actually something else that happened uh, that was actually probably more tragic than both of these things combined. I actually heard about a um, a, a someone who actually uh, that went all the way to Canada to see a baseball game, went to Toronto yes. and yeah. got a Bud Light. Oh and, no! Yeah, yeah. Oh, it, it, no. So that, that is more tragic than, than anything that we, that we did this weekend. <laughs> So, um, yeah, but, but you do that? at least have a Molson's or a Labatt's, <laughs> you know what I mean? Jeez. But, and here's the funniest part like, there's that, that later in the game and like this, I think it was the seventh day and the guy struck out again. So yes. Yes. <laughs> I exactly. went for two more. So yeah. after four, it's like, all right, it's like two waters. So you good. double down. You double yeah, down. Yeah, why not? Well, 
Let's get on to some happier news. As tradition on the show, we always bring a new and unique craft beer to review and enjoy. So what craft beer are you drinking tonight? Kevin Lyon, I'm going yes, to sir. go with you up first. And uh, yes, Caddyshack themed. Yeah, this is why we. I, I, like, I still got to do this song and I got to get my, my gopher out there and just... Because I was literally at Total Wine last week. I just went to look just to get something to, to get through the rest of the week. And first, I found a Radiant Haze out in the wild, one of our favorite beers made by um, Topping Goliath, along with uh, Radiant Beer. Ian had that on the show with us a few weeks ago. Now it actually is here on the West, at least in California. And then I turn around and I see this and I'm like, what? What is what? What? So this literally is by Brewdog, which um, Michael and I, we're, we did a good discussion on them at their Vegas location. We went there about a month and a half ago. And this beer is literally called Bushwood for the club, for the golf club, that, the country club that was used for the movie Caddyshack. Of course, Bushwood. Of course, you got to go for the easy pun. And there he is, the gopher. I guess he got away from me because he's in that photograph. But you know what? A 5% Pilsner. I mean, geez, you know, I might drink these faster than I drink those Coors Light. You know what I mean? So uh, let's have a little bit of information on this. It's 5%. So like I said, piece of cake. It's just, you know, might as well have a piece of cake. It'd probably be more filling than this. And uh, But it's, it's actually a pretty nice German Pilsner, a nice warm day. So Bushwood beer, the light and fresh beer that that is crushable on the course. And if I was on the golf course, I definitely would need to drink because I couldn't get through it. I'm not a golfer. This light colored, as you can see, straw lager features a creamy white head and moderate carbonation. Hop edition give Bushwood beer a light, grassy, lemon character, balanced by a sweet malt aroma at 5% alcohol. You'll be able to scamper along and play at least nine holes. Don't worry. It's good luck. Nice. Cheers. Nice. And, and I, my suspicion is that, you know, it's probably a light Pilsner is definitely going to appeal yeah. to a lot of people. People are going to be yeah. buying it because of the connection to Caddyshack too. So, but a crisp Pilsner. So that, that's yeah, an interesting it, it's description really, as well. I can, like I said, I've already, I've already just, I just opened my second one. So <laughs> I was joking to them. Like I might drink all five of what I have by the end of the show. Oh yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Definitely. definitely. It's pretty warm out too. So it's nice. This is going to be a nice beer during the summer too. And you said that you went to Brewdog or you had Brewdog in in, England, in London. Right? Yeah, because they're London. originally from uh, Scotland, and I went to two of their locations in London in December. And then uh, it was interesting because, like I, I mentioned before, the beers there were a lot lower on the percentage than the ones in the United States. Like it's like, oh, there's a punk IPA I had that was like five percent ish, I think there. But if you get here in the U.S., the U.S. version is like a seven percenter. It's interesting. Wow. Uh, yeah. That's like with the laws or or what, or just that, you know, England might be a couple of years behind of, of America on like drinking the, the hot beer, stronger beers. Got it. Got it. That this is a very, what a, what a find. What a yeah. find. Oh, yeah. you came across this one. And this, what you said, you got this at Trader Joe's? No, Total Wine. Total Wine. Yes. Yeah, okay. I got a Total Wine. So if you go to Total Wine, you might find it there because I imagine it's probably available nationwide if you have one of those by you. Yeah. Or Bebmo, if you have like a major chain like that. But good stuff. It's, it's good. I've enjoyed it. For Pilsner, I'm not yet. Yeah, I'm not I'm not a big Pilsner person, but you know what? I'm enjoying this one, you know, for sure. Yeah, totally. And um I I, I definitely yeah, you also gave me one, so I, I'm definitely looking forward to see what oh yeah, what it's all about. So thank you so much for that one. A great one. Oh, cheers. So one after, of these. <laughs> yes, after the 66ers game, um, uh, I brought Kevin back uh, to uh, Orange County and we said, oh, like we have our, our pick of the litter when it comes to great breweries. But it was Mother's Day also. So we didn't know if things were going to be open or closing, you know, sooner than later. Uh, but one that's always, always a solid bet is everywhere a brewing uh, right in the heart of orange. Uh, so we definitely said, Hey, let's go check this out. You had actually gone there the day before, right? Yeah, I did after work. And I was like, I had been there a couple months going, Oh man, this one, I don't get to enough. And you see, we went over here and man, we had a great time. Yeah. Great it's uh, and this one is the, but of course, uh, double IPA by everywhere beer company, orange, California, 8.5 ABV, no IBU listed. It's a West coast double IPA brewed with Citra Citra Incognito, Nelson, Mosaic, and El Dorado hops. So five different varieties of hops. I'm interested in what the Citra uh, Incognito is. That oh, sounds, I'd never heard of that either. So um, I'm definitely looking forward to this one. I actually have, I'm going to solo myself right here real quick. Oh. 
I'm actually drinking this out of my uh, hanger uh, uh, Inland Empire 66 mug. Um, <laughs> I should have had it for my. I didn't know you uh, had that. That's funny. I knew you had that. Right on. Yeah, that's. It's from a uh, probably like six or seven years ago. They yeah, they had a promotion, you know, of giving these out, and I just happened to see it. I'm like, hey, I gotta, I gotta represent the IE. Yeah, because, um, I you know, I was telling Michael to pick this one. We didn't have. You didn't have. You know, you. I had on the night. I'm with her on Saturday, and I like, oh, man, this is really really good. And we were looking for one to go. I said, you should get this one. He gave him, they gave him a little taster before he decided to buy it. And he let just a little taster. He's like, nope, I'm good. I'm getting this. Yeah, so. it's tremendous. And and the yeah. fact that it was, you know, wasn't brewed that long ago. So it's like, it's super fresh. Um, or it was, it was brewed uh, very recently. And uh, so it's so good. And it's like, again, it's like, we're super spoiled with this type of beer right here. It reminds me of like, you know, um, Green Cheek and Radiant um and and uh all and everywhere is just like right in there it's like uh, it's whenever we get a chance to go out there we always uh, make it a point and uh again if you're in the orange county area definitely make it uh here it's it's definitely worth uh, a visit yeah i i, yeah, I hope they're I, you know it seems like they do pretty well so they've only been around for about nine months or so and and i'm like all right look, they're a little bit they're like a couple miles from some of the other breweries about a mile and a half Angel stadium but i'm like man i hope they i hope they make it you know, they make it good because they make they make really good stuff for sure. Yeah, well, the definitely. best ones at OC. Definitely. So, um, always a winner when we go out here. Uh, hey, uh, congratulations, Dutch. That's awesome. Yeah. To have it. Glad the school's over for you. Yeah, and and uh, glad you said he has here. two hey, semesters really? to go. So I'm like, awesome, fantastic. Yeah. All right, so let's get into it. This is this day in baseball history for May 16th. Right, you May 16th, 1912, the National Commission suspends Detroit outfielder Ty Cobb, barring him from playing this season due to his attack on Claude Lucker, a handicapped fan, two days ago. In support of their yeah. not-so-popular teammate, the Tigers go on strike to protest the decision, which will end... Are you ready for this? Yes. In a one game suspension yeah. and reinstatement for the Georgia Peach. No, wait a yeah. minute. He attacked a handicapped fan and got a one day suspension. <laughs> and, and, you know, and, uh, and this was the. I'm oh, sorry, I went to Cowboy. I put my Cowboy Jack stuff. I'm like, wait, I'll be myself here. I was talking about it. I'm about to go off like, oh, wait, wait, hang on, let me do this one. Baseball's greatest monster, Ty Cobb, Michael Mondragon. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's, yes. that's what we call him here the Bruniverse. Yes. Anyways, um, this was actually the very first hazy history we ever did. Uh, we went live on this discussion because it's like it was like, wait, what he what? He attacked the handicappers in the stands. And, and we may have to go into this a little bit more now and put it here on the YouTube, but apparently there was allegations that um a, a, some kind of slur was thrown by, to Mr. Cobb by this man in uh, the crowd. Shocking. That. But yeah, but you know. But his reaction, let me just jump the stands and punch the guy. And it's like, <laughs> they, he didn't care about someone of a handicap they were, as they were pulling him off, you know. And Ty was definitely, definitely had some temper for sure. Because another thing we talked about on our Instagram days with Haley Hazy History is when he literally fought an umpire after a game. Like, fist went to fisticuffs. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, and it, I think the bigger part of it was, I mean, this was, con I think, considered one of the first baseball strikes. Yeah. Like they threatened to strike, and I think that scared him sure, more. Than any, yeah, I'm sure else. it's just the whole with the whole team. Like, what are you gonna do without an entire team in there? Yeah, you know? they stood to lose a lot of money. And, 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 like, and I don't remember how good the you think <laughs> I would remember this because I was probably at I think I was about a section over where that guy was when the fight broke out. But um, I think you're holding hard. his crutches, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> really. <laughs> oh no! Sorry. Like, hey, 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 hey! Shh, shh! Don't, 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 come on! Keep me out of this. Keep me out of this. I'm trying to. I'm trying to be neutral here. I'm trying I, I to be a neutral this, party. I think the statute of limitations is is quite over. I hope so. I mean, oh yeah, the guy survived. There's no murder. Okay, good. So, <laughs> so if I accidentally stepped on him and Ty Cobb trying to break it up, I mean, that could have easily happened. For all I know. But well, I mean, the Tigers and the Tigers were a popular team because Ty Cobb was, or in 1912, was like arguably one of the one of the most popular, if not the most popular guy in baseball. So. Yeah. Yeah, There's yeah. that to it as well. Yeah. So um, it, a little uh, foreshadowing here. This will not be the last story with uh -oh. players going into the stands. Oh, boy. <laughs> 
May 16th, 1969, Jim Bouton records his first victory as a knuckleball pitcher when the Pilots hold on to defeat Boston 10-9 to in an extra inning contest played at Fenway Park. Oh, look at this. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I, I somehow have my hats right here. It's like, you think, you think we planned this way, and I actually didn't. I'm like, oh, it's yeah, right there. It's, uh, you're like Cher. You have many costume changes. <laughs> Uh, the 30-year-old right-hander throws three scoreless innings and gets the win uh, when Seattle scores six runs in the 11th inning and the Red Sox five-run rally falls short in the bottom of the frame. So, yeah, I forgot that he he kind of... So, in this game, do they have the second the runner on second base start the inning? They scored 11 oh, runs in the oh, 11th no. inning? They played the old-fashioned way. They actually had to get on base. <laughs> wow, and eleven runs in one inning. I'm like, wow, that's yeah. that's pretty crazy. That's that's yeah. wild. Stuff. It definitely yeah. is. Definitely is. May sixteenth, nineteen seventy two. This is a fun one. <laughs> First baseman Greg Lazinski rings the replica of the Liberty Bell hanging in dead center field in the fourth level with a Ruthian blast at Philadelphia's Veteran Stadium off Burt Hooten. The 500-foot wow. home run, overshadowed by Rick Monday's three routine round trippers, will account for the Phillies' only run when they lose oh to the Cubs 8-1. to one. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Isn't that crazy? I've never seen Greg look so young and clean. I know. He does, he does oh, look I'm like, what, man? I didn't think that guy was ever young. Much like, yeah. much like I've never been young. You he's know? super baby face here. He's, yeah. he's white meat for sure. What a, what a, what a, what an awesome autograph that is too. Yeah. I, I, I'm so glad I found that. And the, like the perspective of, of him hitting, you know, that I didn't yeah. even know that there was a liter Liberty bell in a uh, better stadium at that. I, I mean, yeah, I had no idea. And it's just amazing. Yeah. That's an amazing photograph. The fact that they just caught it in that moment, you know? Yes. That's super, super awesome. All right. What do you got for me? Friend uh -oh. of the show, May 16th, 1978, Pete Rose surpasses Mickey Mantle for the most runs scored by a switch hitter when he crosses the plate for the 1,677th time in his career. On Dell Unser's single in the third inning off uh, the Phillies, 13 to nothing route of the Cubs at Wrigley Field. The, the Cubs... Yeah. Uh, are a lot in here. Charlie Hustle will extend the mark to 2,165 before ending his 24-year tenure in the major leagues in 1986. So one of the most prolific uh, switch hitters of all time will never be recognized for it, I don't think. Well, he already has been because he is a member of the baseball brew crew diamond icons. All that's right? true. That's true. We, right. we have enshrined him uh, yes. for everything, but, but baseball still shuns him. And, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't think, I, I wonder, I, I'm sure he I would now gamble at a ballpark or out right outside a ballpark. And this guy is still yes. suspended. Yes, absolutely. And, and that uh, was like, cause you saw, you saw the photograph that the, the gimmick they did where the first bet taken at the, the, the great American ballpark in Cincinnati was Pete Rose cashing it, like bet, making a bet. I'm like, you let <sighs> him do this, but you're still not gonna, you're, you know, come exactly. On. Exactly. So, uh, I, I saw a, a video, uh, who is, interviewing him but it was johnny bench was uh, another friend of the show johnny bench was being interviewed and his take on it was was pretty abrupt it was like he goes there's one rule or just a couple rules in baseball yeah. that you're not supposed to do and one of them is not to gamble yeah. on it and yeah. that's what he did like yeah. why are you asking me this anymore yeah. and uh yeah so it, it that that makes a lot of sense but um yeah i mean pete knew pete knew there was yep he, and he brings up an interesting point here is like, you know, I, I don't drink no beer. <laughs> yeah, but to be fair, a friend of the show, Johnny Bench, said he's not, he's not really a beer guy either. He likes margaritas. I remember he said, "Yes, yeah, sure. so, yeah, you know, true." Yeah, on the like, can't you just say, can't you pretend you like beer just just for the show, guys? Yes, I I think he won. I, I think he was being more accusatory. Like I didn't drink any beer. Like he like what yeah. he he said I drink beer. I don't drink no beer. <laughs> it's still at least he laughed for charlie guzzle so at least at least yeah, yeah, yeah. Has that. yeah it's like one of those things like baseball has its uh you know things that are definitely yeah. they're very embarrassed about so it's like it's always something if if yeah yeah it, it was definitely that was that was a cool that was definitely one of the seminal moments of the baseball brew crew when he when he came on so i'm gonna play this video for you it's gonna go into our next story all righty Four 
saves this year on the verge of doing it again. As the Cubs have put together three straight hits, they trail by one with the game on the bases. As Julio Zuleta reaches out on a slider that does nothing and drives the ball into right field. Green does a nice job of getting it back in. And how poetic would this be? And now we got a problem in the Dodger bullpen. The entire Dodger team has headed down the right field line. Apparently some fans threw something at the Dodger pen, and they're going into the stands. The Dodgers are going into the stands at Wrigley Field. seen that in Major League Baseball. You see it in hockey, but the Dodgers have gone into the stands after a fan down the right field line. And I don't know. It's obviously inexcusable if someone threw something or dump something on the Dodgers, and it would be a terrible way to spoil this ball game with something stupid like this happening. And that was Rick Dempsey right in the middle of it, and he is one tough hombre because I played with him. And you'd have to believe it was something fairly serious because you don't go into the seats otherwise. And the Dodgers coaching staff trying to get their players back onto the field. I have never, ever seen anything like this in a Major League Baseball game. Never. And they continue to throw things. This is just absurd. You've got morons throwing things and morons cheering them for doing it. Folks, this is an absolute disgrace. An absolute disgrace. And now punch is being thrown. Oh, it's getting nasty, folks. It's getting real nasty. You'd like to think that the fans here at Wrigley Field are classy. But this is disgraceful. Absolutely disgraceful. The umpires are over there as well. They're trying to help restore order. And you're talking at a possible forfeit situation for this ball game. If in the umpire's discretion, the safety of the players is in danger, they can cancel this game right here and right now. And the way the Cubs have come back in the ninth, you'd hate to see that happen. Only now, it appears, have all the Dodgers been taken out of the stands. Well, they still can't control this guy, and people continue to throw things. Absolutely disgraceful. Folks, you can buy a ticket. You have a right to come to the ballpark and boo and cheer, do whatever you want, but you do not have a right to throw things at the combatants. You do not have a right to go on the field, and you do not have a right to act like an idiot. And apparently some fans by the Dodger bullpen have decided to do all of those things. So that was... That's May 16th, 2000, after a, a fan steals Los Angeles catcher Chad Kruder's hat and hits him in the back of the head. Many Dodgers, including oh. coaches John Shelby and Rick Dempsey, go into the stands and start fighting with the Wrigley Field faithful. The melee, which, last, uh, which delays the game for nearly 10 minutes, ends with the arrest of several fans and litter all over the field. They actually took... Um, the whole bullpen. So the bullpens are in Wrigley Field used to be right on uh, on the uh, the foul lines, mm -hmm. and so now now they're underneath the the uh, stands. Oh, wow. um, and and uh, so yeah, I mean they were super close, uh, yeah. you know, to the fans and everything. So I'm surprised that that doesn't happen more uh, in, in the first thing. And uh, they actually at after that they pulled all the bullpen into the dugout. You know, just for safety and stuff like that, and yeah, that could have that could have been a forfeited game. Um, and uh, yeah, it was. But I mean, th this this picture looks kind of crazy. But it's it like, does. It's like, are they doing a human pyramid? And that's yeah. what I was thinking right there. It's like, oh my gosh. What yeah, and I totally I remember when this happened, and um, there it, the footage of it is actually kind of hard to find. I actually had to kind of uh, scrounge around for the, this video. 
And um, no, that was actually a, a, um, to answer um, about Ian's the announcers. Question. The announcer yeah, I, is it L.A. No, it's it's Chicago. It's uh, really? Steve Stone. Yeah, and and, and it's it, it, Fox. Yeah, it's at Fox Sports Net, and I was going to mention a guy at the end had a sign. He had to get a sign on camera. It said something. It said WGN, but I couldn't read. I couldn't see what it said under that. So I'm like, okay. Yeah, wow, they were on Fox Sports. It's weird. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was uh, Steve. Steve Stone was the 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 color announcer, and then I think it's like. Oh I think it's, yeah. I, I want to say it's Skip Carey. Okay, um, but Steve and, Stone makes sense because he mentions about how tough for Dempsey is, and that would make yeah. sense because. Still would have been a picture for the Orioles when Dempsey was catching for them. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. it was. And I totally, I remember totally when this happened. I, and if you would have like pressed me for the year, I wouldn't have said 2000, but that sounds about right. But I do remember there was this, this incident. And I said, it was, it's really hard to find uh, because uh, there's no like, uh, like MLB footage of it. They don't put it out there, you know, right. yeah, it's this is certain a things that I'm, I'm kind of, I, I, I'm, I question, but it's like, this one is definitely not on there. Yeah. It, 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 I mean, Michael, do you ever have anything like this happen to you in the in the wrestling days, like with like, like uh, fans like trying to like grab you or throw stuff at you or? Yeah, you know, uh, we we kind of did. We we kind of, if you remember, like in it, it was on a smaller scale, but it seemed big to us at the time at the, in Pomona, where uh, I've had a couple of people like like hit me, and. Um, yeah, it's like I, I, I probably wasn't r right to to you know push back or whatever. But you almost have to like kind of stand your ground, and it's if you yeah. don't, if you back up, it, it's it could get worse. And so it's like you get in that protection mode. Okay, so I I just remember this because I, I do know an instance of something that happened like that that you were at. I heard about a, a fan. I heard about what happened in Alaska. It wasn't you, but it was uh Brian Christopher, right? Do you remember? Yeah, did, did you actually see what happened with that. Yeah, I was uh, I was wrestling in uh, Anchorage, right. and um, and there was it was in a big arena, and there was the, before the show they said, um, okay, at some point there's going to be a fan, and he's going to run into the ring, and the reason why they told us this was not not uh, it kind of seemed kind of odd or like oh okay. okay. And it, it, it turns out like they can never really catch him and they didn't know who it was, but they know that it's like a tradition of this guy. He always does it. And he, so he's like the Morgan of the kissing bandit yes, yes. <laughs> of Anchorage, and his, Alaska. His was that, that he would just run into the ring and just kind of jump around and then, then skedaddle. Okay? okay. He wouldn't, he wouldn't mess with the wrestlers. Okay. But then, um, the, the thing that they asked us was they go, okay, if it happens in your match, please don't kill him. <laughs> oh, oh that, that was the directive from the people wow. in Alaska. They go, please. And did he get killed? He didn't get killed, and they, um, I think they just caught him and, and uh, uh, like subdued Cause, him. Because what the, what I thought happened was uh, the story was that Brian like like punched the guy like in the face or something like that. It's what is what I had is the urban legend yeah. I had heard. Yeah, yeah I mean, Junior, I'm yeah. sure. He, it, it, I think they just he just kind of caught him and just like did, you know they okay, didn't. Like, I thought he, I, I had heard he like got a couple shots in. It's like oh, might have. Gosh. I mean, the, the big thing was like they would <laughs> they would be on offense, uh, you yeah. know, saying that they were you know defending themselves. So yes, the same uh, uh, yeah. Jerry Lawler Jr. For because sure. you know because that's like the thing is that what if you're ever a wrestler that you, you what people don't the amateurs does not know is how to get in the ring. So they let that if you see a fan coming and you see him trying to get in, they're going to take a couple of shots. That's your opening to like protect yourself, you know. Yeah, that's, that's what I would always have heard. There's or a, I never had to deal with anything like that. There's a very famous one if you look it up online where uh Triple H is wrestling uh Steve Austin, it was like a oh. house show, and a guy runs in the ring and he's actually going to attack Steve Austin, and Hunter uh cuts him off. And like beats the crap out of him, and even the referee was guy kick him in the head. But it, it's a pretty famous video if you look for it online. Yeah, and um, if if Triple H hadn't done that, who knows? Like I, no, nobody knows. And that's the whole thing. It's like because you know, even though it's a performance, it, it, there's a lot of it, you don't know, you never know. It's it's like um, yeah. in tennis with like Monica Sellis when oh like, that's right. Yeah, you know, that's, you, you that's never know because you're not expecting right. it, and you don't know what people are, are what they're what they're right. thinking or if they could be right. whatever. And just to even go in there is it's 
kind of ballsy. And so, like, you know, you yeah. think there's yourself like they're uh, maybe on something. They get ballsy to grab Chad Cooter's hat and hit the guy. It's like, what are you doing? Yeah. And it, you can see it's like the, the, you know, just the people are just kind of, kind of, yeah. Nutty. Like, yeah. Barbie's like, it's, I mean, I, I don't, I'm like, I get why the doctors did it. It's like, what, like, you know, yeah. Security's not doing anything about it. Like, no, we're going to protect our guy. I get yes. it. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, it's like, you know, unfortunately uh, a few rotten apples spoil the bunch, but it's, uh, but yeah, it's like that, this was, this could have got really bad really quickly and a, lo a lot worse than what, what happened. Mm -hmm. All right, Kevin. So yes, you sir. are up. Oh my goodness. We're already ready. All right. Like, I yeah, we're already ready for, oh Pint my goodness. Pack. This is a this is gonna be a fun one. We have some 1990 Fleer, and that's a rack pack, right? Yes, it, yeah, that was the name of it. And and if you look at the picture, <laughs> two of the cards were upside down. Upside down. And I'm like, no, you know what? I'm gonna turn the way up where you can see we have at least one Hall of Famer in here, Wade Boggs. So I'll save that portion for last, guys. Listen to this. Let's get it. Let's let's come on, Ian. Let's get the top. Let's get the top. <laughs> we won't even make honorable mention on this one for sure. No, 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 not hobby. This is not hobby. This would be retail, sir. Um, so the difference in Fleer, what they would do is, um, this is towards the end of the wax, the junk air, where discards are not really very much. So Toss would have the gum inside. Don Wars would always every year do a puzzle where you get every pack, you would get like three pieces of puzzle, and you put puzzle together would be a different player every year but what Fleer always did was you would get stickers so there you go there's your my first sticker of the reds and on the back oh hey i have a baseball quiz Do you want let me ask you a question michael mondragon yes yes they're please. all reds and they're all reds questions all right okay awesome let me see here uh how about this let's do um where did the reds play their home games before rivers front stadium that would be Crosley Park. Get close enough, Crosley Park. I can't believe that, Ian, that's this. Jose Uribe. I, I was like looking at the valuable cards. I can't believe you brought that up. And I'm like, what is what? It's like is an average player, but apparently like there's value to this card. And people were saying like it was like a joke that got serious on eBay. Like these cards would be worth something. Somebody even said it might be like a, a money laundering scandal than selling these 1990 Jose Uribe oh. cards. It's like what? So yeah. that's what we're looking for, right? I think Larry Park, Larry Walker, uh, Larry Walker was the rookie card I saw in here. Otherwise, you're looking for like Ken Griffey Jr. second year. But let's see if we get anything good here. All right, I'm gonna start off with a lovely Montreal Expos jersey here. There we go. Look at this guy right here. Look at Mike Fitzgerald. Let's see if I have any fun facts. Cardinal. Yes, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Uh, he's. Not a cardinal yet, actually. Oh, you probably so maybe it's after this because he's with the Mets and the Expos, and later on, and on the back, it's here's the back where you get his vital signs. I'm like, ooh, look at that! You nice, know? great. I usually look for, it, like fun backs. We're not get those, yes, sir. I think it's oh, his his, his birthday was incorrectly listed. Oh, so it ended for Jose well, hopefully we get it. We'll find out here. All right, we got a uh, the guy who had to play third base after George Brett, but a pretty good hitter. At some point, we have a uh, Kevin Seitzer. Oh, I do have a did you know on the back of this. Let's see if it's anything worthwhile. Yeah. Not up reach, no, like who cares about him reaching base in 25 of his first 28 games as well? We don't care about that. What other fun, like <laughs> off the field stuff here? Man, this guy looks so out to be in the big little sticky stealing. He sold the jersey and just walked on here. There's a guy named uh, Greg Harris. On the back, it says Greg W. Harris for some reason. I don't know why, okay. but here he is. And the guy, I love that they're at least making all the. Uh, you know, this is all like their team colors. That's a nice little touch there. All right. War and his warm up jersey, your warm up jacket, I should say, here. You got the satin. You got, um, oh, that, oh, that's fun. I hope I get that. Uh, Dave Rigetti, the ace, and I believe a future uh, coach for the Giants. There you go, Ian. Yep. I, I don't know why he's wearing batting gloves, too. His batting gloves and, a, and his jacket. Like, he's really trying to stay warm out there. All right, let's see here. This this is a guy named Eric Anthony who's going to be like the number one prospect in baseball, like right around this time. I don't know. Do you remember that guy at all? Michael? No, uh, vaguely, vaguely. Yeah. Oh, Eric Anthony. Oh, yeah. Eric that, Anthony, I think... Yeah, yeah. So he was like a big guy in the minor leagues. Like he had like almost 30 home runs back to back years in the minor leagues. So I was like, this is the guy. You know what I mean? And, uh, so there we go. And he didn't have making it too far in the major league, but I definitely remember seeing him because I saw him in Tucson, uh, Michael Mondragon, Tucson Torres. Wow. wow. All right. 
Here's a guy we've talked about on the show named Brian Downing, who literally I could say I have a cousin named after him. How about that? That's My amazing. family is lifelong Angel fans. My cousin Brian. That's a great card, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is like right at the end. You want to see how long he's been playing? That's how long he's been playing. Look at that. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. He had a nice career. Like, not, yeah, uh, this is minor league. 1970, Sarasota was the first place he played. All right. Let's see here. Let's admire, in those 1990, this photo would take 89. Let's take a look at the stash here of Nelson Liriano. Yes. I think we remember him, but I don't remember being like a great player or anything. Let's see. Do I have anything fun here? No. Nah, hey, he signed as a free agent in 1982. There you go. So not even drafted. Um, a guy, I remember him for his name, but I also love the A's warrant here. Lance Blankenship, Blankenship. Michael Mondragon. Yes. There you yes. Go. And, and hey, you know what? You know what else is cool about him here? He is card number one of the set. How about that? Oh, how interesting. There you okay. go. The, the first card of the set. Yeah, that's Lance Blankenship. Like, what? <laughs> but he was just coming up. I think he was actually a pretty big prospect, too. Uh, yeah, he was an All American third baseman at University of California. There you go. Uh, a guy from my hometown, a Garden Grove, California. As a Philly here, not a Met. This is Nails, Lenny Dykstra. Nice. I'll just leave it at that because definitely, definitely uh, controversial. Has some ups and downs in his life. I don't really like being a swear too much, but I don't want to get too political here. All right, we got uh, one third of a great outfield for the uh, Blue Jays in the eighties. This is a uh, Lloyd Mosby. Yep. Solid. Get her there. He was playing with um, Jesse Barfield and George Bell, right? Nicely done. Thank you. Okay. All right. You know what, Michael? I like this one because what I have here, I want to see if you can name this person. The player I'm about to put up is the 1990 World Series Most Valuable Player. Do you know who that is? Jose Rijo? No, you're close, but no. Uh, Chris Sabo? No, sir. And here's uh, the funny part. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, um, uh, shoot. I, I can see him in a hit. He's an outfielder. Uh, an outfielder. Yes. He, he, was, he the, was he the one that kicked the ball back into the Neil Walker? No. no. Oh, I don't know for sure on that. But what's Dude. funny is what I'm about to show you, he's not a red on his 1990 car. He's a pirate. Oh. Billy Asher. Oh gosh, no, I wouldn't. Not, oh, I totally wouldn't have got that. Yeah, I don't remember him being a pirate, but there you go. Yeah. I was like, "What? That's weird." All right, let's see here. I blew that. I one. don't think of as a this guy as a twin. We've talked. Oh, we talked a lot about this guy, Michael Mondragon, Wally Backman. Yes, getting it. The man is a twin here, known for being on the Mets in '86, and for what lasting a week as a manager didn't even. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the game the, the Diamondbacks. Yes, yeah, and, and he, he's has... a he's a Diamond Icon nominee as well. Yes, for some meltdowns, I believe. All yes. right. Oh my goodness, Michael Mondragon! If you want a card in this, you know what the number one card you want is. I'm about to hold <laughs> up. I might have to sleeve this one. You ready? Oh, uh, let's see it. A checklist. Checklist. Yes. Checklist. <laughs> you want the checklist? I got to sleeve that one. <laughs> All right, we got a guy who was a uh, brave. I think of him on the Braves later. Ironically, he's a, a he's a pirate here, but I remember on the Braves because yeah. it was like Sid Bream somehow outrun a Barry Bonds throw in 1991 to help the yep. Braves make the World Series. There yep. you go. <laughs> this is a uh, Sid Bream. Did I see a clean checklist at that? No markings. All right, yeah, not yet. I'm gonna go through and mark them off. Right, that's what I do. I mark them off. Right. Yes. <laughs> and uh, gosh, I'm only third through. We're going to have to speed this up a little bit. Uh, I saw the colors. I was hoping to be a brewer, but no, it's Henry Cotto on the Mariners here. Yes, okay. former Cub. I, yeah, I don't know if he was a, was he a Cub already. Yeah, Cub, a Yankee, and now a Mariner. This, this card yeah. was printed. All right, geez. Yeah, he more just <laughs> ripping and destroying such valuable material here. It doesn't help that I've been drinking like three of these uh, Pilsners. Jeez, it's going to take all night. All right, my sticker first is the Baltimore Orioles. Let's see if I can get you a trivia question here. Let's pick one for okay. you. Okay. All, all right. right, let's see. Uh, let's see. Where did the Orioles play before relocating in Baltimore in 1954? That two here, which I know those two. I only think of one. Well, one that you should uh, know. Oh, why am I? Why am I? Uh, 
yeah, the one uh, they played. Uh, well, the, it wasn't it. Um, wasn't it Mo? Let's see. Why? Yes. Why am I? Why? Right, you just what? said it. Yeah, you're right. Milwaukee and. Well, it was it was a Milwaukee. It was a Milwaukee Braves, right? Or uh, no, no, not the Braves. I no, believe so. oh, not the Braves. You're close. All right, I'm just looking for cities. Come on, I'm looking for cities. Not not Cleveland. Not Cleveland. No, it was yeah. No, it wasn't Cleveland. It was um. So it was Milwaukee, and I didn't know Milwaukee. I just knew they were, used to be the other team. Yeah, the Milwaukee. Okay, so that what it was. It was the Milwaukee Braves, right? The Milwaukee Braves. Moved I don't know for sure. If that's Cleveland. the name. It just has Milwaukee here, and the other one which I knew, I knew, I knew the other one because they would just, they just, be, they what, were what just it? the St. Louis Browns, sir. Which I thought you would have known that. Oh, St. Louis Brown. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. So they, they went back that far. Okay. That's what yeah, I was trying yeah, to figure out. The, I was like, yeah, they went, they went, uh, they were, it said they were in Milwaukee and St. Louis. I remember the St. Louis Browns for sure. And uh, anyway, moving yes. on here, let's, yes, get, yes, yes. let's get some cards here. Here we go. We have Jose de Leon speaking of St. Louis. Here's the Cardinals. It's yep. funny because like a lot of these are like spring training, right? Yeah, for sure. They really don't waste any time getting these photos. Like, they, like you yeah. just look at these jerseys. Like here's Mike Greenwell right here, and you can see that's definitely not a regular game jersey. That's gotta be spring training, right? Yeah, it's all spring training, you know. Yeah, this guy's a pretty solid player too. But I was gonna, but these are all baseball facts. We don't want baseball facts. We want the field facts. You know, if you're playing baseball, I want to make sure you're wearing glasses as big as Ron Kittle here. You know, <laughs> I mean, and he was he was actually a heck of a ball player for he a few years there. Like eighty three was, I think, his key year where. 35 home runs and 100 RBIs in his full first full season. It's pretty crazy. Yep. I actually found something I never never heard of. I've never heard of Chris Hammond. Have you, Michael Mondragon? I, I've heard of him, but it, it, just from that time. Yeah. All right. I, was, if I don't know who they is. That tells you something, right? All right. Let's see here. Again, we're just looking. I just love these warm up. These all warm up jerseys. But another, who? Jeff Hoosen, I guess. Yeah. Never heard there of you him. Go. Yeah. I never love heard of him. Jersey, but, yeah, love the jersey. I was like, I don't know what he's putting on his bat there. Can you even see what he's putting on the bat? <laughs> the heck is he doing? I had no idea. All right. I can make a lot of jokes, but I won't. I'll say, here's Mike Jackson. I'm sorry, Mike Jackson. Ooh. Oh, I'm not going to. There you go. There you go. <laughs> no, I could have done the Ron Artest rap about, you know, <laughs> I cry for Mike. I cry for Mike. And I can't say the rest of the song. Asked I do the research, kids. If you're about Ron Artest rapping about Michael Jackson's death, drop it and bombs left and right. Let me tell you. Oof. Yeah. All right, here uh, another. We got no, hey, here's a giant for you, uh, Ian. We got Scott Gareltz. Yeah, I remember <laughs> I think him. He's a sure. Padre too. I, maybe not. Maybe I'm not. It says he's just all uh, Giants here. So there you go. Yeah, there you go. Got about cat. Right. Yeah, uh, you know, Mike Michael Jackson was definitely an outcast. We're talking about the band outcast. Here. <laughs> I don't know what what is going on. This guy's wind up here, but this is Frank Williams, not not Frank Williams, the wrestler that you would know, Michael Mondragon. <laughs> I wish. Jobber <laughs> Wow, Frank look at that. Williams, not from Columbus, Ohio. Man, look at the, I don't know what's happening <laughs> on that wind up there. It's like, he's the, it's like he's gonna fall or throw it on the ground, yeah, it does. Right? or both. It does does it? Yeah. There. Very interesting. It's a weird wind up here. All right, this I don't think this guy would have been in the brawl because we're 10 years before it, but here's a guy, Jeff Hamilton. Jeff Hamilton. But again, I just love that they use the they, – they coordinate the colors with the logos in the, in the yeah. cards. It's cool. It's a nice little touch there. All right, let's see here. <laughs> the best I, I love that the best shot they got of Brian Holton. I, I, I think he's, Is he a pitcher? Yeah, yeah, I remember being a reliever. I believe on the Dodgers, too, if I remember right. Okay. But there's your 80 stash again, even, you know, in 1989 yes. when this photo's taken. Yes. Taken in spring training, no less, I'm sure. Yes. Um, all right, here's someone who actually was a power. Did, when you think power hitter, you think, would you Glenn look Davis. at this? I wish Jack was here. I'd say, Jack, how many home runs do you think this guy hit last season? Anybody go like seven. And if I look at 1989, he hit 34 home runs. This guy is yeah. coming off a 34 home run season. That yeah. guy, Glenn Davis. Dude. Yeah, he is a he good was 6'3, 210. There you go. That's a very good power hitter in that around then. <laughs> I was trying to, yeah, yeah, there, yeah, of course. I was gonna say, um, shoot, what, what, who's the musician Bob Welch? Help me fill it in, Michael. Oh, oh God, this looks is... like more like the musician Bob Welch. That's going yeah. way deep cut. 
Yeah, I have no one to help me except for you on this one. But this is a veteran Bob Welch here. And if I'm right, I think this is the year he almost won 30 games. Look yeah, at this guy. Oh, that's here. right. Because he was with 1990. Yeah, he was already a Dodger. And uh, he was born 56, 33 years old. And I think he won like 27 games in 1990, if I remember right. He was like maybe the closest guy to come to 30 since Denny McClain. All right, let's see here. Bob Wells was with uh, Bob Wells was with, with Fleetwood Mac and uh, and some other bands, but yeah, but he's a okay. accomplished. I knew, musician, he had a, yes. I knew he was a solo artist as well, but this Bob Welch was a very good pitcher for several years there. Uh, I remember him as a Dodger more, but this is a guy named Sean Hillegas. I yeah. remember Sean late, Hillegas, sure. Yeah, let's look at that. Let, let yeah, latex undershirt. It's like yeah, I don't know what's happening there. It's like I'm gonna take a look at that again. I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> oh, you know that, what? It's I did yeah, so, I couldn't tell that at first. So they in in the early 90s, like uh Mizuno used to put out these uh they it looked like they look like tarps, but the the jackets used to look like really shiny and everything. So it's it's almost like that. They had like a whole bunch of those jackets that were like that, and it was it's supposed to be state of the art at the time, but yeah, like uh <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I can't remember, uh, but but that shiny material, it's like uh, they would use it like to cut weight and stuff like that, and it was like this different material. But yeah, it, it looks similar to that. It, he, he was going on a vision quest, Michael Mondragon. <laughs> yes, exactly. nicely done. <laughs> I think you'd appreciate that. Hopefully anybody knows vision quest. I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, I, 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 an almost young Don Slot here. Like, that's a guy who played for quite a while. Yeah, a Don Slot with the uh, Rangers. Uh, yeah, Royals, Rangers, and then the Yankees here. But again, yep. you got to you can tell this guy's been around by that stash, right? Let's yeah, how old is Don Slot here? <laughs> Don Slot was born in 1958, so he'd be 31 years old in this photograph, maybe even 30. Wow. Holy moly! Wow, Don on yes, Don That's a great name. yes, Onslaught. exactly. I think this guy was the. I think he ended up being a closer. For the Phillies, am I correct, Michael? Bruce Ruffin? Oh, yes. guys, throw the ball at you, Michael. Watch out. Yeah, Look out. Exactly. The ball's right at us. <laughs> you know, wildness has plagued Ruffin each of his last three seasons where when he has lost at least 10 games and has a losing record. Said the same thing. All right, whatever. But That's what you want on your baseball card, right? <laughs> yeah. Did you, hey, did you know wildness is plaguing your career? You're know, like, great, thanks. Maybe thanks for the his second season. Thanks. Thanks for thanks making the critique. Up. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. You need a little, a little bit more constructive next time. All right. Oh, and I forgot. So my last sticker um, is one of these, though. This is what they would do, too. They would do, like, oh, yeah, four yeah, different yeah. teams. And it's interesting because I'm, I'm, like, literally, like, three are all in the same division because it's back when there was only two divisions. Right. They had three Eastern and Texas yep. is in the West. But yep. so I'm just curious what um, – and so there's one trivia question for each of these teams. Michael, pick a team. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, uh, Blue Jays. Blue Jays. All right, your Blue Jays question is, true or false, Toronto is the most northern city in the American League. Toronto is the most northern city in the American League. Yes, sir. What do you think? Wow. Anybody else want to say a true false? You know what? I'll say I'll say false. You are correct, sir. The answer is Seattle is actually yeah, further that's, north. I, I, that's always the Good job. I would have fell yep. for that one. I would have fell for that. Well, I at least know amongst all this, I do have one Hall of Famer, and that would be the chicken man himself, Mr. Wade Boggs. There you go. Nice. Awesome. Right, good job. Good job, Dutch. You got it. Even though I was like, I didn't, I would I would have missed that one, unfortunately, for me. So yeah, Wade Boggs, there he is. It getting ready for another season of chicken beer and batten 350 or whatever he used to do. You know? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um <laughs> this is almost like his he this guy must have bought baseball cards as a kid. He's like, I know the exact pose I want to do with my card. Look at this. Dave, uh, it's Gallagher or Gallagher like the comedian. So there you go. I like the <laughs> you know, pose there. Yeah, he's ready to smash watermelons right there. 
<laughs> yes, he is. I don't think that is this his rookie card. I don't think it's his rookie card. I think it's a second year card in the major leagues. <laughs> All right, we have a uh, red here who I believe he was a cardinal as well, right, Michael? Danny Jackson. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, royal. I'm sorry. He's a royal. He was on the '85 Royals. But he was a cardinal later. I, I believe that he was a Cardinal later. I, I, let me, uh, I'll okay. look it up, but it's like, yeah, but this I think that he was. went 23 and eight in 1988, for the Reds, 23 and eight. Holy cow. I forgot the guy was that good. Wow. That's something. That's yeah. He played in the Cardinals in 97. Yeah. I don't know why my nose. I'm sorry, Michael. Give me a second. My, uh, my nose is itching. Can you read this card for me while my nose is itching? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Otis Nixon. Yeah, yes, I'm sorry. Former Brave oh, had one of the great catches uh, in uh, playoff history. We actually sorry. documented it. Looked like he was floating. <laughs> but yeah. Well, he, I mean, we, I think I know why he might be floating too from, from what happened to him <laughs> off the field, which that's that's right. makes me think about my nose problems. Do the research. I'm sorry. I'm just digging yes. for deep, I'm digging deep here. We call it the ring here. All right, I saw that A Brewers. I'm like, gosh, come on! I was hoping that through. I'm gonna just open another one, just just because I'm parched. <laughs> there we go. All right, we have your now. Watch, we we'll get three Brewers in a row. Uh, let's see. We have Mike, who Schooler Schuler Bueller. <laughs> I never even heard of this guy. Is that stash real? There's no, come on, is that a real stash? What do you think, Michael? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you think it's painted in? <laughs> I don't know. Though this. This guy, oh my God, he's born in Anaheim, California. How about of that? Course. This guy's from my home, where I'm, li right, where I'm living right now. Uh, this man was born in 62. And he, 62, so he's 27 years old when this photo would been taken. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And he just barely made the major leagues. Good for him, though, man. You know what? He made it. He made it. Yes, he man. made it with that. All right. We talked about this. We, oh, we did talk about this guy on the show. Here he is, Big Daddy. I'm not talking about the wrestler or Gary Goodman. I'm talking Rick Russell, yeah, big Rick daddy. Russell. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see how big is he on this card. Six foot three, 240. Yeah. I don't know if I, uh, it's going to be like a Bob Horner. I don't know if I buy the, the weight on the card. You know what I mean? <laughs> we'll see. We shall see. Uh, I I think I, I, I don't know why I want some tacos when I read this card. I want a taco, Michael Mondragon, because it's Kevin putting on the Ritz here. <laughs> I've never even heard of this guy before. I'm just looking about Michael. No one else is going to know what I'm talking about. But I'm putting on the Ritz here. Look at this Kevin Ritz card. A guy, again, I've never heard of this guy. But again, he made for the major leagues. And this man is this man is 23 years old, May 24. And this photo was taken born 65. How about that? That's pretty cool. nice. Good for him. Nice. You know what you mean? Yeah. It's a lot of matters. All right. And I said, I'm not going to make any jokes now. I'm going to just keep going. Alfredo Griffin as a Dodger, not a Blue Jay. You got to love that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. There you mm -hmm. go. I like it. Alfredo Griffin. Netflix grizzled. Yes, indeed. That's how you know a guy's grizzled. Yes. Oh, Michael, I actually, this card I thought would have been worth something at some point. This guy was maybe the biggest pitching prospect in baseball around 89 or 1990. You want to take a wild guess who it is? I'll, you'll know when I show you the picture. For the Orioles. Uh, uh, for the or uh, I was gonna say I, mean, I was gonna say I was gonna say Todd Van Poppel, but uh, that, that's the he's with the Athletics, sir. But this guy athletic. was on the um, I believe he went to he pitched at LSU, which I'm seeing here on the card. But he was also I believe on the Olympic team. So there oh, you go, oh, Ben oh, McDonald. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, this guy was supposed to be like a huge deal, like yeah. He got drafted in um, 89, and he pitched only nine innings at Frederick, which is like a ball, and they actually brought him to the Major League roster in 89 to pitch for the Orioles. That's kind of crazy. Yep. You know. All right. Um, I have a picture here that's a – later I found out this player is a – oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I was thinking of Mike Scott. This is Dave Smith. The other half of the uh, Astros pitching that was doing really well mysteriously in the mid to late 80s. But this guy actually got lost. I got so I remember correctly, right? Yeah, not as many. Yeah. No, okay. I was trying to remember. I thought, oh no, I'm, I'm a off. I don't know why I thought I got a good, a good amount of strikeouts. Yeah, but he's a solid pitcher. Like you know, I, yeah. guess I thought he was. He was. Um, he was. Oh, he's, a, he's their closer. I, yeah. That's why I messed up. He's their closer. My bad. I'm mixing my things up here. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Whew. 
You know, this guy, I think, could have been a thug in any action film in this time period. Look at this. Look at Mike Moore. Look out. Whoa, man. <laughs> you don't want to see him walking down a dark alley. Unless you're a friend right and you want him on your side. Exactly. Yeah, like, oh, jeez. I'm, I'm intimidated, intimidated just looking at his card. Oh, goodness. I've got a couple more here, and we're going to wrap this up here. And I've got no Brewers. What a shame here. And I think I'm being judged for this by Ken Patterson. It looks like he's really judging me here. I don't know what that looks like. <laughs> Yeah, I love that's that. That's the best one I can give us. Yep. I love that Chicago shirt. That's such a cool shirt. Yeah. You know? That's what that's when Chicago changed their uniforms as well. They had that uh, a small yeah. period with that design. It was like very short. Yeah. So cool though. But, yeah, the only thing I like about it is did you know is I like, earned two saves at Hawaii in just three appearances in 1987. Yes. Yeah. Hawaii, Hawaii used to have a triple A team. Back That's right, the Hawaii I, Islanders, right? Yes, the Hawaii Islanders. Yeah, and I believe the most famous player for them, Tony Gwynn, actually played there in the minor leagues. Oh, wow. That? And they, they yeah. played at like Aloha Stadium, right? I'm, I'm sure they had to because I don't know where else they could play. Yeah, because that's yeah. where uh, the football team still plays, and that's uh, right. I believe the same still there. And that's where that the, they used to have the Pro Bowl as well. Yes, I don't. Do they not do it there anymore? No, they it, it's it travels around now. Oh, okay, because that's where it was forever was there. Yeah, it was. All right, I got like three cards left here. Uh, we got – I love the fan in the background. There's a fan in this one. Like, that's the best. They couldn't just retake the photo and take the fan out. <laughs> For Bro Kelly. This is my favorite part. Of that. <laughs> like, this guy just sitting in the background. Maybe it's a relative That's or something. incredible. That's so awesome. I'm trying to see what the hat is. It's a red hat. It'd be even funnier if it's a Red Sox hat. You know what I mean? <laughs> he wouldn't move. Hat. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, it's really weird. Born and lives in Panama City, Panama. But he's a pretty solid player. He, uh, he was around for a while there. Yep. And uh, my last regular card is, I do not remember this guy as a Philly, but this guy played for a good number of years in baseball, uh, mostly on the athletics. This, is at, uh, this guy had to be in the same outfield as, as Ricky Henderson, oh, Wayne man. Murphy. Yeah. He was, he was another guy who, if I remember correctly, was pretty fast, but let me see. Yeah, like this guy – 26 old Mason 1982. Ricky's like, I got five times that. Exactly. You know? And he right he's there. wearing he's wearing that under shirt as well. That that jacket. Oh yeah, that, there it is. Yes. So that's definitely a thing. So there you go. Yep. That's it. God, that's so weird. Very, very popular. And I think is now is that at Veteran Stadium? Because we look we've noticed that most of these yeah, it's one yeah. shot. Like a lot of this is taking a spring training. So yeah. You can tell which ones are actually like because they're in the regular jerseys, unless it's batting practice. Yep. So there you go. I wish I could tell who that is in the background too. What player that is? And uh, and I forgot there is uh, there actually is an insert in here, Michael Mondragon. There's oh, a that's... subset. I'm sorry, it's not an insert. It's called a subset. It's called the league standouts. So okay. uh, I don't know how many is in here, but my league standout here is someone um, you may know. It's one of your longtime close personal friends. How about I, maybe I can just read this? And I love that his name. Is it all capital letters every time they mention this guy? Okay. How popular is this guy? Look at, I love the photo too. This is oh, look at that. Wow. Yeah, that's, a, that's the a cool echo art. picture. That's amazing. Yeah, and look how much information is on the back here. Every time you see Casino's name, it's in capital letters. Yeah. So like, oh, that's cool. I don't want to read all this because it's like we're already we're already going an hour here. <laughs> but you know, eh. Oh, all right. So, uh, you know what? Whatever. How popular is Jose Canseco? I feel like I gotta yell his name here. <laughs> Despite the fact that injuries precluded him playing a single game prior to the All Star break, the fans voted him as one of the American League starting outfielders for the 1989 All Star game. How about that? How good is Jose Canseco? <laughs> Sorry. If you were to prorate his, his 65 game 1989 stats to a usual 158 game Canseco season. <laughs> He would have had 41 home runs and 109 RBIs. How strong is Jose Canseco? <laughs> in game four of the 89 ALCS in Toronto, he crossed a home run in the upper deck that traveled approximately 500 feet, almost a great Luzinski there. Yeah. Let's see. No batter in baseball poses as pose at no batter in baseball poses as imposing a threat to opposite pitchers as Jose Canseco. <laughs> in his first three full seasons, A6088, he topped three home runs, 110 RBIs each time. He was the American League Rookie of the Year in 86. In 88, his greatest season to date. Canseco! It 40, I'm, I, it's like I'm doing the Sega. 
from the old like Sega commercials, you know, the yeah. Sega. Uh, Sega hit 42 home runs, had 124 RBIs, scored 121, still 40 bases. He's also he was in the 88 AL MVP. He trailblazed the 40 40 club. How about that? Become the first man ever. I don't know if people have done it yet. Hashtag do the research. 40 homers, 40 stolen bases in one season. I, I don't know how many people have actually ever done that. Uh, bond, bond, bonds did it. There you go. Take up in a grand slam in his first at bat in the 88 World Series. Despite being elected by the fans to start the 89 All Star game, Kaseko not playing the classic. It marked the second time in three All Star game nominations that Kaseko did not play in the game. Kaseko's 1989 season began immediately after the All Star break. The A's were in second place when, sorry, Kaseko rejoined the team. <laughs> Buoyed by his presence, they were able to win the division by a comfortable seven game margin. And who won the 89 World Series, Michael Mondragon? The Oakland Athletics, uh, but it took an earthquake to do it. Well, you know, got a ring. Oh, thank you, say no. <laughs> and that will conclude. Bye, Max. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out as I go through this nonsense. Cheers, everybody. Who's the copywriter on that one? That that uh, we we know who we're talking about. We don't need to be reminded of it. But uh, you know what? I I'm almost <laughs> sure. In all caps. I'm almost. I'm 100 percent positive. Yep. Like those cards were sought after because of who was on the card but i mean yeah. it's a cool looking card though. it actually is, it a is. Cool looking card, but yeah. yeah for the time yeah definitely yeah so there you go very cool oh my gosh pint and packs that's so fun uh, to uh, go down memory lane at least memory lane for me i, I i'm sure it's new yeah. to everybody else uh that's that's coming here and yeah, watching i'm not i'm not I, i'm not gonna be able to find a pack of 1910 tobacco Cards <laughs> yes, the, that pine packs would actually will be very short because there's not very many uh, cards in that one. But if there's tobacco, I'd have to eat the tobacco. That'd be interesting to, for sure. That's true. <laughs> Maybe my final my final <laughs> pack I ever open. Yes. Uh, yes, pitch. Yeah, pitcher and packs. <laughs> I know. That's why I was like, oh no, this is not a pint can. I'm like, I just gotta just keep pouring, keep pouring, keep pouring. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're actually going to end today's uh, podcast with a rest in power. This rest in power is actually Don Denkinger. Now, uh, I have a actually a very close association uh, with Don Denkinger uh, growing up as a baseball fan because uh, growing up uh, as a St. Louis Cardinal fan, he's actually kind of in my St. Louis Cardinal lexicon of my sweet spot of being a teenager watching baseball. I'll explain that a little bit more, but I, I definitely want to celebrate it. He just unfortunately passed away recently, but let me go over some of um, this man's uh, stats because they're actually very impressive, even for an umpire. So, he was an American League exclusively uh, umpire, um, active from 1969 to 1998. He umpired the All-Star Game in 71, 76, and 87. Umpired in four World Series, 74 and 80, and was the crew chief in 85 and 1991. Oh, he was the home nice. I see why you have an association. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He was the home plate umpire in Game 7 of the 1991 World Series when the Minnesota Twins beat the Atlanta Braves 1-0 in 10 innings, considered one of the best World Series um, games and, and series in history. He was uh, one of seven umpires who worked in two perfect games. Uh, he was the second base umpire for Len Barker's perfect game in uh, 1981 the first base umpire for Kenny Rogers' perfect game in 1994. He was also the home plate umpire for Nolan Ryan's sixth no-hitter in 1990. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, so a storied career uh, for this man. and um, But unfortunately, he'll probably be known for one specific uh, call in a World Series game. So let, let, me, let me go back here. So... A lot of people remember this uh, game six. This is uh, 1986 at Shea Stadium. So most most people know Bill Buckner's career was almost like hinged on this one play um, in game six. So it was an error. Uh, the uh, 
you know, the Mets came back and actually won that game six, won game seven, winning the uh, uh, World Series in 1986. And uh, Bill Bill Buckner took a lot of heat for for this error and un. You know, it happened. It's it's a baseball play, and but he unfortunately suffered for the rest of his career. That it was his fault that they lost this series. But if you look back at it, they had a game seven, and he actually hit really well in the series. And his his career was actually unfortunately tarnished by this one play. Well, let's flash forward. Actually, flash back to 1985 in a game six. This was Don Denkinger. So uh, with three outs to go in the bottom of the ninth, the Cardinals had a one nothing lead and a 3-2 to two series lead. Uh, and pinch hitter George, don't call me Jorge Orta, uh, hit a chopping bouncer to Jack Clark, who tossed to Todd Worrell, but Denkinger called him safe. The Royals went on to score two runs, uh, and uh, tie the series at 3-3. So let's go back to, you know, this is before replay, obviously. So 1985. And this is how far out George Orta was out. And and if you look on, if th- this is on YouTube. You can actually watch this. If you look back, like this is how far he was standing on top of the base this far and and Denkinger is right there now unfortunately in in these days like the the crowd uh, and he was in perfect position umpires are usually taught to look at the base and listen for the catch okay mm-hmm. so that is what he did in this instance now Worrell is a very tall player and you can see the sight line of, you know, looking at the runner, looking at the where the the throw was. This was probably, you know, you have to make make a snap judgment. He probably thought it was safe, right? And if you look at uh, this one, you know, it's like he's well ahead of it in position and everything. Okay. And is so, the ball in the glove? We know the ball's in the glove at that moment. It's, in, it, okay. it's like in, All right. as they as they say now in replay in the back of the glove. There you go. It's not in the front of the glove. It's in the back of the okay. glove, which would make it a catch. Okay. So, okay. So this is, this is a very interesting thing that I, I, I researched when I, when I, uh, when I saw this. So in his book, it's called you're missing a great game by Whitey Herzog, uh, oh. who is the manager of the Cardinals. He late, he wrote that he later wished he asked commissioner Peter Uberoth who is in attendance to overrule the call and declare Orta out. If Uberoth refused to do so, Herzog would have pulled his team off the field and forfeited the game. Wow. And, and now you got to understand, like, so this is a world series game. And this is back in the days when like, you know, again, like, like, I'm not even sure how many people really kind of watch this World Series compared to other World Series because it was a Midwest World Series. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah, there's not- no Dodgers. There's no Yankees. It's a, a two Midwest teams from Missouri. Now, during this time, like, it was it was a big deal. But um, these were two but- franchises that had done well in this time span, too. It's like, right. you know, Kansas City and, made and- the series in 80. Um, Cardinals won in 82. Uh, they, they lost – the next year of the World Series too, right? Or am I thinking the Phillies? No, no, no. Um, in eighty, it, so so it was uh, the car. Are you saying the Cardinals? Yeah, Cardinals are eighty two and eighty five. Right? Cardinals, Cardinals were in eighty five, then they were eighty seven. They played the Twins. Oh, 87, right, right, right. Sorry, eighty eighty six was the Mets. Uh, right. I was thinking eighty. I was thinking eighty three for the Twins. For the I'm sorry for the Cardinals. It was the Phillies. Eighty two. Eighty two was Cardinals. They won. That's when right. they won. Right, right, right. So, so this was like. You know, obviously a big deal and, uh, you know, obviously a big, you know, like, but in a matter of like two minutes, like there was a lot going on here. Right. So Denkinger always contended that he got the call right until later. Um, I, I think it was Joe Torrey who was running the, uh, the umpires at that time. I, I think, uh, said that, no, I, I think you got it wrong. And he was like, you know, mortified of course, because he knew 
and and what I found out later was so as a Cardinal fan, like as a kid, I'm just like, oh my god, this guy screwed us and umpires and baseball and blah 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 blah. But what I figured out was that that when I watched this really great documentary that came out years later, was that Don Denkinger actually uh, he suffered death threats for two years after this. So when the Cardinals went back to the World Series. It just fired all, everybody back up. Now this is this is what's what's kind of unfortunate about this too. So Denkinger claimed that letters continued through 1987 when the Cardinals were ramping up for another World Series appearance. This time against the Minnesota Twins, Denkinger got in contact with Major League Baseball security, who in turn contacted the FBI when he received a particularly menacing letter with no return address in which the writer said if Denginger is in person, he would blow him away with a 357 Magnum. Wow. Now, um, oh, also yeah. now adding to this fuel, this is, this is, and this is very unfortunate. The immediate aftermath after the 1985 world series, Denginger received many hateful letters, including death threats from Cardinal fans, including t- this is, I, I, I had heard about this, but I didn't know it to be true. Two St. Louis disc jockeys went on to, re, uh, to reveal Denkinger's telephone number and home address. Now, he is actually from Waterloo, Iowa. And I didn't know this, but he has he had a restaurant there. And I was actually in Waterloo, Iowa, I think like in 2018. <laughs> yeah, I would have like definitely that. gone to his restaurant. And I, again, he, he's someone like at, at the time, you know, I'm a I'm 15-year-old. I'm like, oh, my God, this guy blew the call. And, yeah. You know, ruin my childhood or whatever. But the thing that I learned through this documentary was um, he's a human and he seemed like a genuinely great guy, nice guy and didn't deserve this hate. And again, it's, it's a big call. He missed it. And there was no replay back then, but he took a lot of heat and it was it basically defined his career in a lot of ways. But um, he, he definitely, strived past this and definitely did not i won't say let it affect him because who who wouldn't be affected by those death threats for a baseball game right so but he's he he took it in stride and definitely moved on and had a a great career um despite this he actually went on and, and did much more past this game but again this is what he's defined for and um the one thing that I wanted to put also because that game six, he actually had to home plate umpire game seven because mm-hmm. he was the crew chief and yeah. the Cardinals melted down. They yeah. lost 11 to nothing. Joaquin yeah. Andujar, uh, <laughs> down. John broke Tudor. the toilet. I know he, the, in that, he broke the, he like bashed the toilet with a baseball bat. Yes, and John. Okay, uh, there was another pitcher who started that game, John Tudor, who right. went in, and this is again the 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 baseball pitcher IQ test. He punched a ceiling fan. Yep. <laughs> yep. yep. So again, it's like the Cardinals had. Uh, there's actually a really cool thing on YouTube as well. It's like why you can't blame Don Denkinger for losing this series, <laughs> and they actually. They could have got out of that ninth inning and in the sixth inning. They actually there was a, a, a pop pop foul between Porter and Jack Clark that they missed. Uh, they had another game to 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 you know yeah. obviously stuff. So they win. They didn't. It, again, it was one call, and he took it. But you stride. lose eleven to nothing. You lost all your momentum. You lose eleven nothing. I mean, come on, yes. you lose all your momentum. Yeah, exactly, and they they were out of it. They they hinged their series on this call. So uh, it was it was definitely one of the worst, like it was embarrassing to say the least in Cardinal history for sure. And uh, but again, it, the the total pro, he still went out there and did his thing. It's like it's like Armando Galarraga when 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 Jim Joyce like he took away his perfect game and he had to like umpire the next game. And man, it, it's like he he sucked it up. He said like I missed the call. Like he he owned and up to it. Oh, so. I forgave him for that. I don't think if anybody ever heard that story, but it's crazy. Yeah, what a, what a crazy story that was. Yeah. So, um, I I put this to bed as a Cardinal fan a long time ago because I I saw what this man went through and I didn't think that was fair. 
Um, yes, he missed the call, but it was, it was it, again, that's what I find out as I, as I grow older and watch more baseball. And I think Kevin, you said it recently as well. You said that you really like that. You don't, that, that we're watching, like we're watching minor league baseball and we don't have to have a dog in the fight. Like we don't yeah. have to worry about like, Oh, our team has to win or like, like well, I'd rather I'm for major league ball now. I'm like, I'm way, I'm way less stressed. I, you know, I'm like, you know, the angel, like, great right, angels, whatever, whatever team it is. I'm like, I'm having more fun. not having to worry about a team in any sport. I'm like, gosh, it's not, having, not having a vested interest. Yes. It just got yes. to step back. You know what I mean? Like right now I could be like, Oh, uh, you know, I grew up, in LA my whole life. I'm like the Lakers are playing a conference final game right now. And I could be like, oh, there's so much right in my life where I was like that. Now I'm just like, no. they do great. If not, oh, well, but I want to enjoy the game exactly. no matter what. That's no, the best I, I think I'm in my life. That's definitely the fun part of what we do now. We can celebrate these people and not really have a, you know, a dog in the fight. And I, 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 you know, when I talk about this man's accomplishments of what he did in his career, it yeah. didn't hinge on one play in 1985. He actually was very accomplished and and had a body of work that you know uh, that, that he can be very proud of and uh, I, I you know I'm proud of him. Cheers, Don Denkinger. Cheers. Um, definitely uh, rest in power. And uh, yes, uh, <laughs> Ian asked, "It was a silly fan on or off? Does it matter?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it could. It could if it's, if it's in a high setting like. Oof. It could, but but back then in the eighties, those those uh um, oh, they were not that fast. The ceiling fans were actually like faux wood and they were they were like, you know, this very weakly made. So it would to rip it out of the wall would not be that that big of a deal. Well, he might have gotten more hurt if he punched it and it came off and hit him in the head. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. There was they they definitely um destroyed that uh that clubhouse and very classless i think and it's like i understand like the the heat of the battle so uh but i and i get it i've i have my moments as well so i there, get it <laughs> i don't know what there was one stadium i went to that actually had an area i want i might be changed seal but i remember the, they had a room with like a porcelain toilet and a porcelain sink for people and just like for people to just take out their their frustrations. Really, where where is that? I think it was. I want to say it might be Chase Field. It's either, it's either Cleveland or Arizona. They're doing the stadium tour. And it's one of those two, and I'm just like, that's good. Get these guys just get it out of their system with uh, something where they won't or hurt themselves or damage anything like permanently. <laughs> I guess you know, just hope they don't hurt themselves. Yeah, that that reminds me of like when I I can't remember what airport I was at. I have to really dig in my memory because I I've been to a lot of airports, but I remember there was an airport. Like I went into the men's room, and right uh, before the men's room was an area where a dog could go and like pee on like a kind of a faux tree, and I'm just like, <laughs> oh, this is so interesting. And that's what it reminds me of this area where you can go in yeah. and just beat. <laughs> yeah, just take out your frustrations. Like, good, you don't have to break the, the toilet. The janitors be like, oh, it's not again. Yeah. Like, here's porcelain. Yeah. Beat the porcelain all you want. It's going to be hard to do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> again, rest in power, Don Denkinger. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. We uh, definitely celebrate your baseball accomplishments. So, oop, add to stream. There we go. All right. So, hey. uh, this. Saturday, we w definitely wanted to put over um, Angelo Trinidad, who will be doing a 2023 Tops Big League Baseball. Uh, I believe he's doing a blaster box of that. So definitely uh, some some cool cards there. He's actually had some really popular stuff from WWE. If you want to go back uh, a couple mm -hmm. weeks, that's uh, been really cool. And uh, hey, Here's where you can find us on all the social medias. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, and TikTok. Kevin, yes, sir. What do you think? What do you think of tonight's show? I had a good time. I can't believe we almost an hour and a half with just the two of us. Jeez, I know. But you I know. know, I I do want to get a plug out there because I've not done this in a long time. If you need to get lighten up a little bit, get some humor in your life, go to tiktokcom slash Jackie Martling or pick up your phone. And call the Jackie the Joke Man joke line at 516-922-WINE. You can hear some good jokes. I don't think I can say them on the air. But, you know, you can at least get a couple. Of, I can't. 
I can't say <laughs> you, yeah, I'm sorry, you can't. Well, I mean, you can, but it, we we would definitely change the theme of the show. <laughs> be, well, I mean, we 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 actually technically do a uh, adult show. <laughs> Yes, uh, and as Jackie says, use your finger. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you everyone for tuning in. We again, we we've done 159 straight shows, which is actually really insane. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm crazy or smart uh, by doing these, but it really, really uh, makes me feel good that when uh, I see all the people in the chat and uh, they're participating and. Um, and and it, it means the world to us that that we have people that really care about what we do and all our enthusiasm and our really just insane baseball knowledge and 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 enthusiasm for this sport. So uh, everybody, thank you for joining us. Shocking, we'll be back an, uh, next Tuesday with a hundred and sixty. Uh, episode right so right. we definitely uh want you to be here hopefully we'll have uh cowboy jack angela trinidad around the corner we'll have all the crew back and uh get it together but the two-man crew did it today did it tonight we we, we go to the pay window that's right that's right baby <laughs> we did it we did it so thank you for joining us tonight we'll see you next tuesday with another baseball brew crew podcast good night everyone take care <laughs>